Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Fugu with Mr. Fugu's Data Science. Today is a how-to for inserting data from Python to Postgres. All the code will be provided on my GitHub, which is Mr. Fugu Data Science, as well as this and any other videos, which will be on Mr. Fugu Data Science on YouTube. Let's get started. Today we're going to create two uh, files to basically hide your user credentials and uh, any, uh, and your database. So we're first starting with an initialization file that will store uh, basically uh, the program we're using, our host database, your your user and your uh, user password. Then we're going to use a config file which is taking the data from the init file and outputs it as a uh, dictionary which is basically shown here. So we have host, we have a local host if we're not logging in from somewhere, whatever database, well the database and whatever the database name is that you're using, the user in this case it's Postgres, the password, and the password here was Postgres for this user. So let's create that real quick. We'll just call, uh, get in your editor of choice. I'm just going to uh, use the terminal and uh, use Vim. So let's create this uh, file. So let's call it, um, I don't know, database. Uh, I and I, I guess. I'll use Vim. And then I'll do uh, I to enter. And then we'll do Postgres SQL, Postgres SQL in a bracket. And then um, host equals uh, localhost. And then uh, database equals and then your database whatever you named it and you want to log into and then we're going to have a user and then your user name and then same with password and then that's it for this file and you can do escape colon w to write q for quit make sure it's in there it's in there escape colon q to quit okay fine for me i don't need this file i have another one um, now we're going to create the config file here and i'll just call it uh, Um, config dv dot pi file. I'm going to Vim again. Insert. Now this one's a little, a little long, so bear with me for a second while I type this out. So we're gonna need to do a bash command. Uh, so if you're using a um, virtual environment, you would actually use that on this line. Now we're calling the config parser uh, with the function uh, config parser. And then we need to actually create parser so hold on let me step back let's define a function called dang it config where file equals and then we'll just whatever your database uh, init file was called and then we'll have section equals and we're calling uh, Postgres 
then we close that parenthesis out, semicolon, indent with the tab, and then create parser. So parser equals the config parser that we're calling in from Python. And then let's read the config uh, file. So that's going to be uh, parser.read and then the file name, whatever that is. And then you will have to basically get the section and then defaulting to Postgres. So let's do the um, dictionary that we need to create. And then that's, uh, we need to basically check to see if the section of Postgres parser exists. So if uh, the parser has a section called section, we create the parameters we're going to need to read, which would be your dictionary. So parser.items for the section we're calling. And then we need to um, iterate the um, parameter in parameters. And then we need to create the key value pairs for our dictionary. Um, param one. Okay, oops. Before I get carried away. That's what happens when you're live coding, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we need to return an error if a parameter is called not, um, basically not listed in the init file. So that's going to be an else and then we need to raise um, an exception. So we say, all right, the section <sighs> not found in here, then the file. Um, we need to format where we take the section and the file name. I think that's good. And then we need to return our key value pairs. That's everything for that one. That was a, that was a lot of your coding live. We can also, uh, you could either pause the video and take the file or just upload what I have from GitHub. Okay, everything's saved. Okay. So now we created those wonderful. You kind of look at this right here. I'll go slow, and if you want, you can pause the video and type it yourself. So if you weren't able to follow along, that's fine. I'll just scroll kind of slow. And you could just stop at different checkpoints. And there's also links that are in the code from where this came from, uh, from the from Postgres to, uh, tutorials, as well as uh, another site that I saw who's setting this up. Now here's the workhorse. We're going to install the SciCop G2, um, whatever that stands for, heck if I know. Uh, but here we go. You can do a pip, uh, pip install or a sudo apt get if you're using Linux. Um, I did two different things, but we'll get to that in a second. So 
depending on where you have uh, Python located and depending on how you want to set this up you could also do a, a conda install and also pay attention to the the version of uh, Python you have for the pip so I'm using Python 3 but this could also be pip 3.3.5 just depends um, I think it defaults to Python 3 after like 3.7 or something like that I don't know anyway so what I did was I first did a pip 3 install for uh, this and it installed and looked perfect and I went into the Python interpreter and I said okay that's imported in I said eh -eh. and I said okay fine it doesn't want to work so I said well let me try the conda install and see what happens I did that and then everything worked fine and so I said well huh something's going on so I may have an issue with um, I didn't have compatible or incomplete uh, dependencies because there are dependencies and you may want to uh, brush up on the documentation uh, or uh, my local path was um, not defaulted correctly and I may have Anaconda as a default path for Python which I think is the case um, either way I'm not sure uh, what was going on but I finally got it to work I was thinking of maybe a dependency issue still but who knows I left the link also um, for you to look at I think it's for Mac only though I decided we should use a memory pro profiler today which is basically looking at the uh, memory usage uh, for your operations that we're performing in the instance of uh, like a really large data set where you have millions of rows this is kind of important and we're going to also import time so we could time the operations as well as find out how much memory uh, was used and this would be great for benchmarking and help you optimize performance uh, in the real world so to get this you can do the pip3 install with uh, memory dash profiler or you could do the uh, conda install and you have uh, two lines that you need to do sequentially and those are provided here and I also provided as always a link for the um, profiler uh, official documentation so if you need to create a new user other than root I provided this code right here I use homebrew so I just log in with uh, PSQL Postgres and then uh, after that I just do create user whatever the user's name is with login uh, password and then in uh, single quotes I did whatever my password I wanted and then a semicolon and then to give you the ability to do stuff you have to create permissions so then I did that after the fact you can do it link it in here some some way uh, but you could say alter and then the username you just created and then I put create DB so I could have like create delete and I think it's update and I don't think very much more and then basically here's the printout of what it would look like just as a table view so I created Mr. Fugu and then I have uh, permissions of creating databases now if you need to create a new database and you don't have an existing one you could export this data to you would do um, outside the terminal where it has like the dollar sign like this you can do create DB and then minus big O whatever the username you created and then the database that you just made and then you can go into Postgres and then you can look with uh, I don't know if this forward slash max slash, forward slash L I guess and you can get a list of all the databases that are available. So mine is we're gonna be looking in a second anyway. PSQL. Okay, so for me, I called it fake people because we're using fake data that I generated in a uh, other video, which will be linked at the end of this video. So 
So let's do a little bit of coding. This is the uh, this is the full document that I did, but I would like us to have a little bit of um, exercise to um, finger exercise, you know, to basically get you in the swing of things. It's the only way to uh, get good at coding is actually coding, not just listening to me. So let's do this, import the this package. Oh, before I forget, and then import um, dot extras. And then we need, oh, pandas for the data frames. And then we need to actually fetch files, which will be OS. And then we need to import time so we could time the operations and our trusty friend, the memory uh, profiler. And then <coughs> I basically should have did this, but uh, from memory profiler import, um, what was it? The um, memory usage. Yeah. And then we need to um, go to Funk Tools. We need to import a few things. So, oh, no, we just need wraps here so we can create decorators. Here's where we need a few things. So we need to do um, from typing. We need to import the iterator. We need to import optional um, any um, dictionary and list. I think that's it. And then let's see what else. We need to also get import I.O. And then this last thing here, I created my file and I called it this. So this is my .py file, so config user data. And then the function I'm calling in is the config function that created. So to make sure that everything's fine and dandy, let's do this, make sure it's actually installed. which is great. Um, here's something I want to show you. It's going to throw an error. So this is colon from Python 2 if I'm correct. And you say, okay, what's up here? You say, all right, Python 2 is giving me some issue with um, hashing. Why is it giving me a, you know, hashing MD5 protocol issue? I don't even know. It's some compatibility issue. For some reason, it just doesn't work. I don't know if it's because Python 2 is getting deprecated or what's up. I don't know. In the uh, in the stuff that we're interfacing with uh, Postgres, you're creating a connection. And then this connect, co connection is a class. And it's responsible for what we're calling a transaction. And for, for this, we have two methods. To, uh, to terminate the transaction where you have a commit and a rollback and the commit is saying okay let's send this uh, change or, uh, or update or insert or anything like that permanently to the database and then you say okay that sounds great but what happens if something fails what happens if you abort you lose a connection well that's where you set up a rollback uh, to take this and revert it to the last instance that you had of that database. So this is very convenient and you could create it with a try accept if else type of situation in a function. And I provided the documentation. So next we need to do, uh, let me see, we need to get the config parameters. So we want to start establishing a connection and then uh, creating a cursor. So 
this call our parameters I'll just call it params underscore and then we'll call the config uh, function and then we need to connect to the database and so how do we do that we create a connection and then we'll say let's call this um, site cop g2 and then we say all right let's get our connection and then let's take all of the parameters from the uh, key value pairs uh, then we create the cursor which is basically sorry uh, connection cursor there we are and then uh, oh I decided to use connection dot auto commit equals true so basically what I want to do here is say oh Jesus that's what happens you live code and don't pay attention auto commit is allowing me to send everything immediately um, this isn't always uh, something you want to do but considering what we're doing here and it's somewhat of a toy example it'll suffice so now I'm going to create a function allowing me to find the uh, CSV that we're going to import and use uh, to create a data frame and then in this tutorial basically what we're doing is we're saying all right two specific things one that send a data frame to Postgres to the send a CSV file to Postgres also let's see if we could do some queries from the data that we have inside of Postgres and can we um, send any data from Postgres and import it into Python okay so let's define this function and I'll just call it OS I'll just call it any with any directory search which is kind of misleading because it's looking for all files within um, what we're looking and then it's going to be taking in a file and then let's just use some empty list I created this in an alternate video but if you didn't want to do a link and do an import from a file that you may not have downloaded yet I'll just provide this code here so we're going basically from outer to inner files to look for the specific file that we want and we're doing this with the walk um, OS um, I guess method OS.get current working directory where we um, need to loop inside of F and then making a a string that we can use and then we have to say if a ends with whatever file we're trying to call and this can this can be like a .csv or file.png it, it could be either like a full file or just an extension just depends on what your you know use case is here so let's print off a let's print off um, p let's also create a variable called t which should be reading the csv that we're taking where we take p and then we have to concatenate to create the location we're actually looking for and then we say the names um, the names will be what our um, file actually has for uh, column names so we have a row ID we have credit card we have an email We have a first name and a last name and a primary phone in that order.
And then we say the header equals zero. And then we return T. And then we say, okay, create the function. Now let's call it. And we'll say OS. What's going on here? What the heck? Oh, dang it. OS directory search. And then we'll call the file that I made before. Let's see if it works. Doesn't work. Because as is always trying to make this and that. There we are. Okay. Hmm. This is incorrect. Row ID credit card email first name last name primary phone huh okay so was there not a row ID thought there was the heck? Why is this all moving over? <sighs> Something I forgot. So, Roy ID, credit card, email, first name, Last name, primary phone, header equals zero. Let's go and see where I messed up on the original. Header equals zero. Looks the same. Sometimes looks are deceiving. Looks are deceiving. I missed something. So, now it's fixed. Whatever I missed, it's corrected now. Sorry for the confusion, wasting the time. Okay, let's call this address. D F um, underscore, I guess. So these printouts are basically like what file we're creating and then where it was on the laptop. Right, so we got an idea later. Okay. Oh, what a delight. Now, let's get rid of that funky little. Let's get rid of that. Um, let's get rid of this. DF equals, and then we'll say, we'll call this. Um, take the location, all rows from uh, column one to the end. So we're taking this all the way over.
There we are. Now it's fixed. Save it real quick. Okay. I was kind of lazy, didn't want to type this out real fast, but basically we're creating a definition uh, called a staging table uh, where this table is what will be imported into uh, Postgres and we're saying, all right, uh, drop the table if it exists and it's called staging people. Create an unlog table for staging people with credit card being text, email text, first name text, last name text, primary phone number text. And say, okay, tidy this up a little bit, which is fine. So we'll say, all right, let's make sure, let's see what's going on here. So let's get into this database that's show the tables I have two of them now let's see if there's actually any data inside of this there should be because I've done this before now what we're gonna do is we're gonna overwrite this we're able to use the with a statement um, because um, th this is considered a context manager you could look it up there's further reading on it uh, it's kind of like with open stuff like that but this is actually creating it so we'll run that real quick then we're gonna go back verify that we overrode everything we did we're gonna import the start uh, all the, we're going to use the start um, time and we're going to use all the time stuff. So we're doing a time.perf counter so we could basically increase the resolution um, for counting. I'm creating a decorator function. That's where the funk tools uh, wrapper stuff came in. And this would be pretty cool. I'll show you why. But basically, you'll use like an at symbol in front of whatever function you're using and you call it and the output will be whatever the function you're using at that time the time it took to run your operations and the memory that was actually um, used so I'll run that I'm converting the data frame to a dictionary uh, and you gotta use this for records we'll show what it looks like so we have a credit card whatever credit card number and then your email all this is fake data I generated it uh, before an R yeah, there's no privacy issues, so don't worry. So now we use this formatting to send our CSV to Postgres, where we're um, we have a file named um, address Python convert R CSV. which is fine okay I don't remember when I made this oh we're creating it so we're dumping our we're dumping our data frame converting it to a CSV naming it this uh, index equals false we're using our decorator uh, function we're sending we're creating a function to send a CSV to Postgres where we're input is a connection a CSV and a table and we're saying all right uh, Let's have SQL. Uh, this is, this is a standard. You can find this in the documentation for Postgres. But you're saying, all right, copy uh, copy your string from the standard in with a CSV header as a delimiter um, by commas, and then we're taking your CSV and we're reading it, and then we're saying, all right, our table is called this table we're importing and then we're saying all right with a connection dot cursor uh, as uh, cur and then we're executing whatever command we're doing so we're using truncate to avoid duplicating our data multiple times and then um, this is a uh, concatenating and, and basically doing like kind of like a query operation set at once and then 
we're doing a copy export where we're sending whatever our query information is in our table and then we're providing a file and then you're committing everything and if you were to use these it would it would do this and then it would close the connection but we're still going to use it so let's run this real quick so there's a time it took there's a memory taken let's verify that we have data again um, why do I have five lines? What the heck? Which file did I just call? Staging people. Why? Okay, let's do this again. Something's funky here. Alright, zero this out. Port this. Port our decorator. Send this file. Why is this only five long? <sighs> this file. Let's do this again. something what is going on here Heck. It's a connection yeah so we should have 5800 rows let's create this again let's do this again make sure it's a zero Good. Execute this. Call this. Call this. There we are. Now we're good. Something happened. It was overriding it somehow. I don't know why. Um, let's make sure we could do some kind of a query. So when you're using any kind of a select in here, you do like a fetch one, fetch all, fetch many. That's just something to remember. So you do an execute, there's also execute. Um, execute many. Um, and then you do your fetch. So there we did. So we said the select everything and we're saying, okay, we're verifying this. You could have put any kind of um, select statement in here. I'm just giving you a proof of concept to show you can actually query back from Postgres to Python. Now I have an alternate method where we're doing an import pandas.io.sql as sqlio. Um, and then I'm basically querying the same thing and I'm calling it where I'm saying sqlio.read. Uh, your SQL query where we're taking whatever your query is and our connection and then at the end you're saying connection equals none and then you're creating from whatever your query information a data frame this could have been any kind of query and you could have populated a data frame so that's another cool um, aspect that we have let's do uh, a data frame that you're taking from uh, Python and send it to Postgres. So we're creating a, uh, a list dictionary. So we're doing the same uh, staging function, 
I just underscored it here and then did it and then did version two for each one of these. So let's use that. And then let's verify something. So I had it already and we're saying, okay, we have 5826. So now let's use this and override it to make sure it works. It worked. Then we're saying, all right, let's create this function where we're using the uh, profiler again. We're doing, I just called it function. You could call it whatever that makes sense right now. So you're basically taking, you're saying, all right, if your length of whatever data frame you have is, you know, something, it's actual data frame, do a list of that data frame. Uh, we're doing the columns, we're joining this, uh, comma separating. We're uh, joining your strings, we're iterating. Uh, and then you create an insert function for it. And then we're doing truncate again, so we don't duplicate the data. We're creating a, uh, as usual, the cursor. And then we're here's your extras. And we're doing this by batches now, which is a little different. And then there's the time that it took. Let's verify that it actually sent data. Perfect. You also have the same operations just like my SQL where you can alter a table, we can create a primary key, you can do um, various updates that are here. I provided the link and it gives you some uh, various explanations and uh, rundown that you can use. And then I provided you uh, some code or a website so you can look at code for actually doing inserts and that's the end of this video i tried to go as fast as i could the uh, there will be links in the video description for the uh, code on github if you have any questions or any topics that you would like me to cover feel free to leave them in the comments and as always turn on your notification bell and subscribe and please like the video thank you and have a good one Bye.